This video for Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming is for integer operations in Java. This covers integer division specifically and the modulus operation in case you are unfamiliar with those. So we're just going to talk a little bit about how integer division works and how the modulus operation works and how that uh, can be used in Java. So the integer division operator is the slash operator. And its purpose is to find the quotient of the first operand with respect to the second operand. So it is a binary operator, which means it takes two operands, one to the left and one to the right of the slash. And it produces the integer result of that division operation. So what, did that, what does that mean? the integer result of the division operation. Well, if you're familiar with division, then you know that when you divide one number by another, that sometimes you end up with a fraction. For instance, 3 divided by 2. Normally when you ask, um, what do you get when you divide 3 by 2? For example, if you're going to share 3 cookies between two people to share them fairly, you'd have to break one of the cookies in half. You'd give one cookie to one person, another cookie to the other person. You have a cookie left over, you break it in half, and then each person gets a half. So um, usually division this way has a chance of producing a fractional value. So one and a half uh, cookies goes to each person. In integer division, your result is always going to be an integer. So one example of this is 10 divided by 3. In integer division, 10 divided by 3 produces 3. How do we arrive at this and how do we explain why we end up with 3? Well, um, one explanation for this is uh, truncation. So in, by truncation, what I mean is that you would do the division the normal way, I guess. Think of it as the normal way. You would think of how to fairly share 10 things if they're split three ways, and you would get some fractional value and you would then truncate the fraction off of that value. For example, here I'm going to use um, Google Calculator in order to show you that if I take 10 and I divide it by 3, this is the value that I get. So by truncating, we just throw away all of this value and that gives us just the 3 and that's how we say that 10 divided by 3 produces 3 that's one way to think of it but there are other ways to think of it for instance you could use measurement division which is to say how many 3's are in 10 when you think of it this way there is there, uh, you can think of it without thinking about there being a, you know, fractional part. So if we look at this representation of ten things, and we want to think of well, how many, how many times can we get three out of that without any, without any fractions? What would that look like? So here's a 3. So we can say, well, there's one 3. We can, let's color it. We'll just, so there's one 3. And here's a second 3 here. We'll color them differently just so that we can see the separate 3s. And then we can't, uh, we can't fit it horizontally, but we can identify you know, three more here. 
So there's a third three. So that's three. And then we've got a little bit left over, so we can't make another three. But we were able to make three threes, and therefore the answer, that's another explanation of why the answer in, in integer division is three. Because you're able to actually get you know, three separate threes with something left over, but we're really only really only concerned with the integer that represents how many threes are in ten. So once that's clear, we can talk about uh, the other operator. the modulus operator which is used for the modulus function which is another integer operation in Java and uh, elsewhere the modulus operator is a little bit different it uh, there is a a function or an operation called modulus in mathematics and the way it works is the modulus of the first operand with respect to the second operand produces the remainder of the quotient of the two operands. So you can see this works together with integer division. When you produce an integer division, there's often a remainder. Well, there's always a remainder value. And the modulus operator is the operation that will give you just that remainder. So how should we think about this? And how do we decide what it, what it is that it produces? Well, let's think about uh, our 10 divided by 3 example before. Let's think instead of 10, mod, uh, 10 modulus 3, or as we sometimes abbreviate it, 10 mod 3. So revealing the answer here, 10 mod 3 produces 1. So why is that? Um, one of the reasons that I suggested that we think of how many threes are in 10 as an example is that it's easier to see how mod works when you think of division that way rather than thinking of the truncation method. And this is why if we look at the division and truncation, when we divided 10 by 3, we got 3.33333. So if you look at it as, uh, well, you know, you've got this 3, then what's left over? You've got this 0.33333. So is that the remainder? No, that's, that's not what the remainder means. So that's not as helpful a way to think about the mod function or integer division for our purposes. So Thinking about what the integer division result for 10 divided by 3 is, is helpful to us, especially if we use the other form of division. How many 3's are in 10? Let's look at this example again, this representation we used before. So if we count how many 3's are in 10, and if we actually remove those 3's, what the remainder means is what is left over after we've removed those threes. So we see that there are three threes in 10, and then there's one left over that is not part of those threes. Let's look at another example. What would 10 mod 4 be? Well, what would 10 divided by 4 be in integer division? Look at this representation and think about it for a second. Pause the video if you would like. So 10 divided by 4 in this case, if we were going to ask how many 4s are in 10, we know we can fit one here, and we can fit another one here. That's 2. And then with what we have left over, we can't make another 4. So 10 divided by 4 in integer division would be 2. So I would like you to think about what would 
10 mod 4b. Pause the video if you need to. So 10 mod 4 is what's left over after you've done integer division. So as we see, saw, there are two 4s in 10, and then we have two units left over. So 10 mod 4 is 2. 10 div 4 is 2, and 10 mod 4 is 2 in integer operations. Let's quickly look at one final example here that uh, shows a special case in, uh, in div and mod here. 10 divided by 5 in integer division. We find 1 5 in 10 and 2 5s in 10. So 10 divided by 4 in integer division is 2, and 10 divided by 5 in integer division is also 2. What about 10 mod 5? 10 mod 5, we can find 1 5 in 10, we can find a second 5 in 10, and we've actually accounted for all of the units in this 10 which means we are left over with zero. So the remainder is zero. We do have a remainder. It is zero, which means that 10 mod 5 is zero. And that's the, uh, that's the result there. So how is this useful to us? Uh, our int integer division operations and integer modulus operations used for anything in computer science? Well, actually, yes, they're very useful because they do some things that are maybe cumbersome to do in other ways. And so getting to know how div and mod work can sometimes lead to the solutions to, um, to certain problems. And so I'm going to look at one way that this is applied in, in this example. And so this is a very simple program that we are going to write that determines how many buses are needed if you have a certain number of students that need to be put on buses and the buses have a certain number of seats. So right now this program doesn't do anything, well it doesn't do anything interesting at least. If I run it, it just says we're going to need zero buses because it sets necessary buses to zero and then it has an output. So um, if you would like to try this challenge with me, then I would suggest that you either type in this very short program and make modifications as I'm going to, or um, there's going to be a link and uh, a description of how to download a sample program and uh, create a project in, um, in Eclipse for it. You can um, download the program at the link, create your own project so that you can, uh, you can program along as I do this. I will uh, let you pause the video and go do that and uh, use the link if you've never done that before. Okay, hopefully you've got this in Eclipse so that you can, you can follow along with me because it's going to be a lot more um, useful to you if you've played around with this sort of thing. All right, so we need to determine how many buses that are required for 100 students. So which operation or what operations will help us with this and how can we use them? So we could say we could do a kind of division and I'm going to say just to, um, let's see, well, let's, uh, so we've got necessary buses as an integer. Let's do some, some math here. Let's say, well, we're just going to divide the number of students, we're going to say necessary buses,
equals the students divided by the number of seats on a bus. Right? Because we've got a certain number of students, we want to divide them among buses. Another way to think of this is to say, well, if you have 30 seats per buses per bus, how many like bus chunks can you distribute in 30 students evenly? And then let's just print out necessary buses and let's see what this does. We want to ride the bus. There we go. So it says we're going to need three buses. What do you think about that answer? Why did we get three buses? Is it correct? Will we have enough buses for the students? So if you're thinking about that, maybe you can draw a picture, decide um, whether this makes sense. Pause the video if you want to continue to think about it. So I'm going to talk about it actually using um, drawing similar to what we had before. So let's imagine that each one of these squares represents 30 of something. So 30 seats. I'm sorry. Each, each square represents 10. So this is a bus. And a bus has 30 seats, so this is 10 seats, 10 seats, and 10 seats, 30 seats. And this is 10 squares, so that's 100 students. Okay, so with 100 students, 100 divided by 30, how many buses do we need? So we've got this. So let's say we have, the answer we got was three buses. So let me duplicate this and make three buses. Okay, here's our three buses. So we put 30 students on the first bus, 30 students on the next bus, 30 students on the next bus, and what happened? So our integer division has a little bit of a problem. Well, it doesn't actually have a problem, it's just that in the real world, uh, the question was, how many buses do you need to accommodate all these students? And the integer division, what it provided us with was how many was the answer to how many buses would be full of students. Okay? So how many full buses of 30 students would we have is really what we got out of this. So actually, what we need to do here is we'll solve this problem. How many how do we figure out? So what can we do mathematically to figure out how many actual buses we need? Think about a possible solution to this problem. Maybe write it down so you remember what you what you did. Or modify your program to include that solution. So here's another question. If you've modified your program, what if we bring in some new buses? So get rid of these buses. And what we're going to do is we are going to make a new bus that is much larger. So now, in this case, we've got a bus that seats 50 students. So one solution to this problem of with 30 students, since we we got three buses. One solution might be to say let's add one. All right? Because then when we run it we 
could get four buses. So we had three full buses, and then we had 10 students left over. So we have another bus that we put those other students on. Okay. But now, now let's say we have some new buses that seat 50 students. Will this solution that worked for increasing the number of buses, will it work for our new system where we have a bus that seats 50 students? Think about it for a second. Pause the video if you need to. So I'm going to measure here how many uh, buses we need. And I'm, I notice that one bus is not enough, so I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to make another bus here. And it looks like we, we can actually accommodate all the students with two buses, which means we need our, our algorithm or our program to calculate and come up with the answer two buses. Oops, hang on a second. So I did not use the correct variables here. I should have used students and seats per bus. If you caught that, then that's excellent. Noticing. OK. So if I run this now, it's adding one, and it's telling me that we're going to need three buses. But our calculation said we only need two buses. So think about why just adding one doesn't work for all cases. And also think about how would you modify this very simple program so that it would get the correct answer every time. If you're not sure what this program is doing, and you're not sure about the representations that I showed you, go back in the video to when I started talking about the program and watch it again. And think about what you can do to modify this program to get it to work correctly. Because clearly the correct answer of buses in this case is two. And we're pretty sure, I think, that the correct answer for the number of buses in the previous case was indeed four, since we had some leftover students. If you haven't already downloaded the, the short code for the program, if you don't feel like typing it in, um, watch the uh, video about how to create a... Um, a project to mess with this on your own in Eclipse and follow the link to get a copy of the, the program and try it out for yourself. And I would also suggest that while you've got this you um, experiment with the mod function and one way I would suggest that you do that is by adding something like uh, like um, remaining students. Let's say I don't give it a value here. So you never actually want to have any remaining students in this example. You want them all to be on the bus. But when you do the integer division, you are sometimes going to have a remainder. So if we just go back to the normal integer division, and we add remaining students in here, just to see what the calculation is, we'll, we'll do a mod calculation. We'll say students, and then mod, or modulus, seats per bus and let's create another line of output here
Okay. So now we should see... We're going to need two buses and remaining students is... Oops, I didn't change this. Remaining students... In this case, we're going to need two buses, and the remaining students is zero. But remember that when we have 30 students per bus, I'm sorry, buses that have 30 seats that can seat 30 students, we have the result that we're going to need three buses, and that we have 10 students left over. So think about how to solve this problem so that we get the right number of buses so we don't have any students left over and when I say we so that we don't have any students left over I don't mean so that students mod seats per bus is zero I mean so that we just get enough buses so that we can put those 10 students on an extra bus here so we don't end up with just three buses in this answer so think about that for yourself see what you come up with